the Lord. We just believe the Lord's going to, something good's about to happen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God's going to work a work. I just want to be a part of what the Lord's doing, don't you? Praise the Lord. You say, well, preacher, these are just challenging times, but that's when God, how many of you know when, when your back's against the wall, that's when God works the greatest, when nothing else will. Amen. Let's look to the Lord and go to the Lord in prayer together. Let's pray together. Our gracious Heavenly Fathers, we come before you tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege that you've given unto us, Lord, to be gathered into the house of God. What a privilege, what an honor, Lord, it is tonight to serve risen and Savior and Lord, soon coming King, our precious Redeemer. We just pray a special blessing upon all of those that have joined with us, Lord, on Facebook Live, web page, Lord, whoever that it might be, Lord, asking you to touch them, Lord, in a special way. Lord, we pray tonight, all that's traveling, those there during this time and season, we just ask a special blessing upon them. Lord, we're going to give you the praise and glory for all that will be accomplished in this service tonight in Christ's wonderful name. And everybody said amen. If you have a hymn book, turn to number 286. If you want the notes there, it should be on the screen there. The Glory Land Way. How many of you are glad you're in the Glory Land Way? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. Well, I'm in the glory land way. Telling the world that Jesus saves today. Yes, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is near and the way grow it clear. Oh, I'm the glory land way. Listen to the call, the gospel call today, and get in the glory land way. Wanderers, come home, oh, hasten to obey, for I'm in the glory land way. Well, now I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Oh, heaven is near and the way groweth clear. For I'm in the glory land way. Onward I go rejoicing in his love. I'm in the glory land way. Soon I shall see him in that home above. Oh, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Oh, heaven is near and the way groweth clear. For I'm in the glory land one more time the course. Oh, I'm in the glory land way. Yes, I'm in the glory land way for heaven is near and the way groweth clear for I'm in the glory land way praise the Lord 248 just over in the glory land if you're in the glory land way it won't be long we're going to be over in glory land praise the Lord amen I've a home prepared where the saints abide Just over in the glory land And I long to be by my Savior's side Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land I'll join 
the happy angel band just over in the glory land just over in the glory land there will the mighty host I'll stand just over in the glory land I am on my way to those mansions fair just over in the glory land there to sing God's praise and his glory share just over in the glory land just over in the glory land I'll join the happy angel band just over in the glory land just over in the glory land there with the mighty host I'll stand just over in the glory land what a joyful thought that my Lord I'll see just over in the glory land and with kindred saved there forever be just over in the glory land just over in the glory land I'll join the happy angel band just over in the glory land just over in the glory land there with the mighty host I'll stand just over in the glory land with the blood washed strong I will shout and sing just over in the glory land. Glad hosannas to Christ the Lord and King just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land I'll join the happy angel band just over in the glory land just over in the glory land there with the mighty host I'll stand just over in the glory land praise the Lord what a day what a day that'll be Praise the Lord. I don't believe it's going to be as long as it has been. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. So good to have you in the house of the Lord tonight. Many there we want to remember in prayer. Uh, there the Lord would just touch. Before I go there, maybe you have an up to the hand request you'd like to just signify. The Lord knows that need tonight. Lord, to minister to those needs, we need to, I believe, if we've ever really, if we've ever prayed and got a hold of God for this nation, I believe we need to be praying, seeking God. We don't need to, you know, give in. Now, so often, you know, we give in there, we look at the circumstances and say, well, it's impossible. But how many of you know there's nothing impossible with God? I, I know there's something other happening in this nation, and it ain't good. It ain't good what's happening here, but, uh, but I, I'm going to deal on a little bit for his things tonight. God's about to serve an eviction notice on this world. He's about to do it. It won't be long. But until then, we want to be about our Father's business and reach every soul that we possibly can and get them in before it's too late. And if you're joining with us on Facebook Live there, web page, we just pray that God will just touch you. And you will see the urgency along with us there for us to really seek the Lord. Never before have I carried the burden that I feel like that God has laid upon me. And I'm not praying for God to take the burden away. I'm praying for God to give me the grace there to be able to bear uh, there and be that instrument as the Lord would have me to be. But uh, let's continue to remember Sister Brenda Grubbs in our prayers in the hospital and asking God to continue to touch her. 
and uh, also Sister Odessa Barbara. Let's pray for her that God would touch her, Sister Jean Allen. Our Lord would minister to her, Sister Loretta Huffman. Let's continue to lift her up in prayer. Also, Sister Pollard and others. Any other outspoken requests that you might have? Yes, Sister Pollard. Sister Millie, yes, she's to have surgery. Uh, does she have it today? <coughs> she was supposed to have had surgery today. And uh, so let's can lift her up uh, in prayer. The Lord would touch her, Brother Jay. Let's remember Brother Ricky and Sister Anna in prayer. Both of them seem to be doing pretty well, but let's remember them. Sister Vicki. Yes, let's remember remember her. Yes, Sister Paul. Yes, remember him. Any other? Yes, uh, uh, Eli had surgery. Let's remember uh, Brother Jeremy and Sister, uh, well, her name was Jessica. <coughs> remember uh, Eli, their little boy, in prayer and uh, others. I have a s also, uh, the Lord knows, he knows about as far as that, that need. Uh, there, remember my sister in prayer lost her husband. Uh, there, the uh, memorial service will be on Saturday, uh, the twelfth, and uh, we'll be going down, being a part far as of that funeral. Uh, there, in fact, he had asked me to preach his funeral, so pray for me that God would help me. During that time, I'll be able to help hopefully somebody. Almost so. Also, my good friend Philip Leggett, remember him. There, lost his mother. And I uh, was graveside yesterday to remember that family. Anyone else? Now let's take these needs to the Lord in prayer. Brother Mike, would you lead us to the Lord in prayer? Gracious Heavenly Fathers, we come before you tonight. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us and privilege, Lord, that you've given unto us tonight, not only to be gathered in service, Lord, but to come before you, Lord. Uh, before the throne of grace to receive help in the time of need. I'm asking you, Lord, tonight that you would, Lord, move in a special way into these lives. Lord, you are our healer. You are our Jehovah Rapha. You have placed within the body, Lord, the gifts, the gifts of healing, the gift of miracles, the gift of discernment. You've put the gift of faith. Lord, we believe, Lord, that the God who did is the same God who still does. And asking you, Lord, to bring healing, Lord, into the body of Sister Brenda Grubbs. Continue to touch her, Lord. I'm asking you again, Lord. I believe, dear God, if we don't receive the first time, uh, you've given us, Lord Jesus, Lord, an encouragement to come back. Oh, to come again and to pray. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I believe that, Lord, that you've given unto us to that blind man that you healed, that you prayed for, so trees, but the second time he saw clearly. I'm asking you to touch Sister Loretta Huffman. Touch her, Lord. We pray in a special way. Touch our precious young people and others. Dear God, Lord, get place within them a hunger, a desire for the Word of God and the things of God. Lord, we're seeing, dear God, Lord Jesus, that, Lord, this world is shaking. Lord, America is shaking. Dear God, judgment's about to fall upon it, but Lord, you're giving us a window of opportunity to reach, Lord, lost souls and that we might bring them in before it's too late that they would be ready, Lord, for the rapture, Lord, and be prepared, Lord, for that day, Lord, that's at hand. It's coming, Lord, as sure as the Lord is lightning from the east. Almighty oh, God, our Lord is coming back to earth again. And, Lord, we just pray, dear God, that the church, Lord, the church for the bigger part is asleep, Lord, will be awakened to what hour that it is, what time that it is, and, Lord, seek thy face. Call Calling upon you, looking to you, Lord, believing that the God who did is the same God who still does. Touch each one, Lord. Touch, Lord, those, Lord, that are uh, there on Facebook Live, on, oh, Lord, the web page, whoever they may be, dear God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would, Lord, touch them tonight. Give them a hunger like they've never had before. Realizing, Lord, we need one another and as a body of Christ to work. We'll give you praise for all that's accomplished in Jesus' holy and precious name. And everybody said amen. Don't forget the offering there when you go out. The, I believe we put the basket back there at the back. Brother Shane will 
do it, but maybe somebody has a testimony before we get into Revelation chapter 15 tonight. If you have your Bibles there and would, uh, would turn to that Revelation chapter, chapter 15, if you have that and turn there to it tonight, Revelation chapter 15, and we're going to read that here tonight. It's only eight verses, but there's a whole lot in that, in this little, little chapter here. Eight verses. I look at it as eight is a, is, is a new beginning. God's serving an eviction notice as far as on this world. They don't think it's coming. And a lot of folks, there's a lot of folks in the church world don't believe it's coming. Because if they did, they'd be living different than they're living. Uh, we, I know we don't like that, but, I, you know, I've, I've got a responsibility. When God called me, it wasn't something that I wanted. It wasn't something that I asked for. I, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed raising collards. Anybody in here like collards? I enjoyed raising collards, and the Lord blessed me to raise the backbone with it. Yes, yeah, sir. Pigtail, hog's head. Some of them turning up their nose already. Uh, amen. Hey, when you was raised up like us, you know, you eat everything but the squeal, they said. So, amen. Revelation chapter 15, if you're there, can stand for the reading. Let's read together. And I saw another ain't another sign. So John there, if you're reading in Revelation there, it's over and over again. John said, and I saw, and I saw, and I saw. So here it is, John seeing here another sign in heaven, great and marvelous. Seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up. Literally here, in them is completion or made it make an end, or fulfill, or finish the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled or mixed with fire, and them that had gotten the victory, these are literally the tribulation saints there, we'll speak about that, over the beast and over his image, over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the hearts of God. Uh, there, going to be able to play a harp, sounds like it there. If you ain't never played one, looks like you're going to be able to play one here. How about that? And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true. Notice that. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Not King of sinners, but King of saints. Who shall not fear thee? So there's coming a time they may not fear him right now. Let me say that to you, there's a lot of folks in America don't fear God, but there's coming a day that they will. Who shall not fear thee? That's what he's saying here. The time will come. O Lord, and glorify thy name, for thou only art holy for all nations. So this is literally here speaking of the millennial, the time coming here that all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are manifest, or they are now known. And after that I looked, and behold, a temple, or the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was, was opened. I thought I missed a word. And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded here with golden girdles or sashes. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels even golden vials. Literally here, that's bowls because it's being poured out, full of the wrath of God who liveth forever and ever. And the temple was filled with the smoke, or with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple. So there's coming a time when there will be no more intercessory. Even Christ himself, there will not be interceding for man no more in this period. Till the seven plagues, seven plagues of the seven angels was fulfilled or completed. Father, we thank you. For your word tonight, we're just asking you, Lord Jesus, to touch us in a special way. And ministering, Lord, we pray to each one that's gathered here tonight. And that not one will be able to leave in the same manner in which they've come, but you'll be glorified and honored. For all of those that join on Lord live on Facebook, Lord, or with some other time, we pray, dear God, 
that they'll have a hunger and a desire to know, Lord Jesus, your word in a deeper way. Lord, that their faith will be increased, Lord, to see, Lord, with things that are coming to pass right now that lets us know we're on the brink of the coming of the Lord and it could happen at any moment or any day, any hour, Lord. It could happen, Lord, it's at, it, at, uh, at midnight, could happen at, uh, at the sun rising, at, at noonday, but we know, Lord, that it's going to happen, Lord Jesus, because you said it would. We'll give you praise for all that will be accomplished and done in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. So as we look here tonight, uh, before, I, before I get in uh, there, I, I, I got something that I, that I read, and I would encourage you uh, there, if you ever read anything behind Michael Snyder, uh, he's a very good writer uh, there, and I read this the other night here. Now, how many of you know that or have heard that, in other words, these elitists want to create a problem and they're watching your reaction? Okay, so while they're watching your reaction, uh, there they've been able to successfully uh, bring about almost half of the church emptying itself out. That's, that's what they've done. And so they're offering you now, going to offer a solution. Michael Snyder wrote an article about this here. He said, after this new wave of lockdowns, most people will accept any solution because they will be so desperate. So I wanted to share something with you here. And I, I, I'm not going to read it because it's uh, three pa almost three pages. But I do want to mention there that they say that they've got a vaccine. They've got a vaccine out, but what they're not telling you is about what that vaccine does. Listen at me very carefully. He said, after seeing, and, and I, before I get to that, he was saying, after seeing what the first round of lockdowns did to our nation, why would these politicians want to do it again? More than 70 million Americans have filed unemployment claims. 70 million in 2020. More than 40 million could be faced eviction. 40 million in 2021. And there has been a dramatic spike in suicides during this pandemic. When a 90-year-old woman named Nancy Russell found out that another lockdown was happening in her area, she decided to opt for assisted suicide. And this here woman here uh, did, did that. Now, there are 10 COVID-19 vaccines that could be available by the middle of next year if they win regular approval. But their inventors need patent protection. Patent protection, the head of the governmental pharmaceutical industry group said on Friday. As soon as the public can get, get them, it is inevitable that millions upon millions, and this here is uh, Michael Snyder's been reading. He keeps up with all this stuff, and I, I, I love to read behind him because he's saying things that a lot of writers that are not not dealing with but I want you to listen at me very carefully he said <clears throat> he said as soon as the public can get them it is inevitable that millions upon millions of people will rush out to get their shots so that they can return to their normal lives but what they aren't telling you is that these new vaccines are an entirely different from vaccines that you may have gotten previously these new mRNA vaccines are act will actually, listen carefully, hijack your cells if you take them. Anybody getting that? Here's what he said. When Moderna was just finishing its phase one trial, the Independent wrote about the vaccine and described it this way. It uses a sequence of genetic RNA material produced in a lab that when injected into your body must invade your cells and hijack your cells. Protein-making machinery called rib ribosomes is produced or pr to produce the viral components that subsequently train your immune system to fight the virus. In this case, 
case, Moderna's MRNA-1273 is programmed to make your cells produce the coronavirus in famous coronavirus spike protein that makes the virus its crown-like appearance. Corona is crown in Latin, for which is named. Under normal conditions, very few people would sign up to have their cells hijacked. But at this point, millions upon millions of people will be so desperate for a solution that they will take the vaccine no matter what the long-term consequences might be. Anybody listening? And if you don't take one of the vaccines, you may soon find that you ain't able to fly internationally. I'm not going to read the other part of it, but I will go down to the very last part where he said here. They want to control what you think as they lead you into a die-spoken future that will ultimately turn into a complete and utter nightmare. The truth is that none of us will be going back to our normal lives ever again. This here that they're, that they're doing, I shared that with you here tonight before I go into here to chapter uh, 15 and start sharing with you to show you that God, or he sees what man is, is doing. I don't know where you heard the woman that used to work with Dr. Fauci that went to prison because she wouldn't give what she wouldn't give out. But the lady, the lady there, the, the thing that far as that, the things that she shared far as back then, she said that they had hijacked 40 years ago our science. So this sees here, you, this is what they've done. They have seized our science. Instead of making, let me say something to you, but whether man has a cure, try to bring you under, them, under their cells as some kind of robotic person, that's what they want to make you out of. They want to make you out as some robotic kind of a person to control you. If the church does not wake up, you're going to wake up one morning and you'll not have a church because they're coming after the church, uh, the church, its status, its, its status there to where we have, if, we, if this church has to start, and other churches have to start paying taxes and not be tax exempt, a lot of churches will close in America because they cannot afford it. It is encroaching upon us very fast. But the church, oh God help me, the church is asleep. We don't realize what time it is. I am fully convinced if the church believed, believed, and I'm not throwing no stones, nobody that would be watching us on Facebook live, please don't misunderstand me. But I'm fully convinced if we understood what time it was and God is about to serve an eviction notice on this world, the church would be full tonight. We would not be concerned about coronavirus. We'd be concerned about whether we're ready to meet God or not. I'm fully convinced of that. But I want to deal tonight on God's eviction notice. And it's being served. All of us who hold uh, true, truth to be dear, in other words, to our hearts, have been witness a continual disdain, a literal hate. I don't know where you have witnessed this or not, but there is a literal hate for truth right now. They don't want the truth to get out. I don't know where you've watched. Listen, I want to say something to you. If it had been the other way around in this election, every newscast would be carrying every one of all of those who are coming out, serving, signing affidavits, putting their lives on the line. They'd be carrying it through every news organization. So what I'm saying to you here, this hasn't just started just a few weeks ago. This has been going on for months upon months and even years. Listen at me carefully. A continual disdain, literally a hate for the rule of law. And which, by the way, here, God is the one that enacted the rule of law. If you do not have law, you have lawlessness and a civilization will completely collapse. You have to have law. 
Could you imagine not having speed limit laws? I can tell you when I'm in a hurry, if they didn't have a 65 and 70 mile speed an hour, I'd be going about 90 or 100 miles an hour and I'd probably get killed. I'm, 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 thank God for laws. Thank God that they've got it there. You know, for, for us. But judges have become advocates there. They're literally, they're the ones that have been promoting this rise in evil. How? They've been giving criminals and rapists the slap on the wrist. Lawyers have studied the law and found loopholes to play, to play on the minds of juries. So that when they know, when they know good and well that they are guilty as sin that they committed, and then they, the prophets, but the prophets told us that this would happen. He said that there would come a time, according to Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20, when they would call good evil and evil good. But I let me say something to you. But, uh, oh, but all, but all of this here, God, all that, uh, um, all that this means right now is that Almighty God is serving notice that the day of hypocrisy and cru crooked deeds Healing is over and a new king of glory is about to take over. He's going to rule and reign. Oh yes, there will be here God serving eviction notice in that seven year tribulation period when God is pouring out those last seven plagues on those that said we don't want nothing to do with your God. I'm telling you they're going to come face to face with God Almighty. Oh but we're going to be around the marriage supper of the Lamb and there we are going to praise our God throughout the endless age. I don't know which side you want to be on, but I want to be on the right side whenever he comes, hallelujah, for his bride. So when you look at this, here, you and I, he, the new king is coming, and you and I, those who have been faithful over a few things, he's going to make you and me ruler over many things. Who will rule? We're going to reign with him. This apostate church, who is the mother of harlots, and that's the Catholic church. And I know, I, I just found out to, through my friend uh, the other day that they shut Doug Small down for a month. Just simply because, and they feel like what it was, was when he stood up and they're going to do more. Come on, somebody help me. I'm telling you, it may be a time when you and I can't even get on Facebook because of what that they're trying to do. They don't want our message to get out. Why? Because it has an effect upon people. Because the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And when we stand up and proclaim Almighty God's eternal Word, it has an impact upon the hearer and that hearer says oh my what must I do to be saved well glory help me tonight so God is serving an eviction notice that apostate church mother of harlots the catholic church there she is the mother of harlots she's got a lot of little harlots you got Romans 1 and 18 I want us to really see this here I'm going to go slow tonight. I may not get, get too far here in it, but I want to go slow enough to, so that you can see what's been going on. Uh, it goes all the way back as far as to those uh, to seven churches. It wasn't long after Jesus went away that it began to start the truth. So whenever people has been exposed to truth, when you're exposed to truth, and then, you, then you notice here what this here says. All right, he says the truth in other words, they hold the truth in unrighteousness. What does this here mean? Refuse to warn the wicked of the coming wrath. Literally that word there, in other words, they, they hold the truth in unrighteousness. That means they suppress it. That means to put an end to by force, circulation, or publication. What are you saying, Brother Warren? I'm saying here, that's exactly what they're doing on Twitter. That's what they're doing on Facebook. They do not want the truth to get out. Well, let me say something to you. They may shut me down, but I 
can get on a street corner somewhere. I can go down the road and I can proclaim that judgment is coming upon this world. Tell everybody you can that Jesus Christ is serving an eviction notice on this world and it will soon become the kingdoms of our God. Did you know something other? Jesus Christ himself, he did not bow to Satan when he said, if you'll bow down and worship me, I will give you all the kingdoms of the world. Let me say something to you. Jesus could have, but he knew the kingdoms were going to be his at the right time. So he had two days, and there he's patient with the Father, and for the Father's will to be done, he's got, the Father is out to get a bride for his son, and so if you and I will be patient, as Jesus has been for 2,000 years, then you and I will reign with him forever and ever, and the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God. They're suppressing it. Doug Small was suppressed. Cut him off for 30. In other words, you know why they done that for 30 days? He said, we're going to bring you under our. And okay, you've got to be careful on what it is you say. So anything that's being said now that tells there, when you stand up and you tell, it was, my friend told me he believed it was a cause that he stood up and said, there ain't no way that a Christian, a person that claims to be a Christian, can go into a voting booth and vote for us against abortion. Ain't no way. It's impossible. You, you can claim to be a Christian, but you are not a Christian if you go into that voting booth and you vote for abortion, homosexuality. It's impossible. You can have all the claims, and they can claim they can be as long as I don't know what, but it's impossible for that to happen. And so people standing up and warning people as far as of these things, they want to shut our voice down. But God's going to listen. Let me tell you something, other. When that angel comes and preaches that everlasting gospel, I want to tell you, tech ain't going to have nothing to do far as with that. All the world and all of those that are left behind in the tribulation. But what I'm doing, Sister Mary, is I'm trying to tell people, I want you to be ready before you go into that horrible time of tribulation and be rapture ready to go out of this world. He's coming back and he's serving notice on this world that he's going to bring all the all those underneath his feet. So they're suppressing the truth. That's important for you to see. And they ho told the world that they have nothing to fear. This is what they're telling. They're preachers standing in the pulpit. Standing in the pulpit. I had one to tell me today. Uh, they're about a man far as in, the, far as in his church. Uh, there that uh, he come up uh, in other words he died committing adultery and was in church but you got preachers that are stand in the pulpit and say because you got saved when you was a child you're going to heaven now i don't know what bible they're reading out of but it ain't in this one there ain't no sin gonna get into that heaven it's got to be dealt with here in that heart. And the only one that can change that heart is through a blood transfusion. So we see here that the world, they're telling the world there, that preacher standing in the pulpit telling the same thing, and that this is what they, that literally this happened. And they're telling. And so we're seeing this going on because Almighty God is all love. Now I want to tell you something. Another God is love. I want to tell you, he can't love you no more today than what he loved you yesterday. But he does not love sin, and he cannot have fellowship with it. That's the reason why he came to change us. I want to tell you that, no, listen, God didn't send his son into this world to keep me and you in sin. He wants to have a relationship with us. That's the reason when he sat at that table with his disciples there, I have desired, a desire. There was a desire. With desire, I desire to eat this, this meal with you. But we're going to eat it again into that kingdom. Can you imagine? It ain't far. It ain't long. We might have a year or two. I don't know. We may not even have tomorrow. And I'm telling you, if I wasn't where I needed to be with God, I'd get right before the the Lord come to take his church out. And so here, Almighty God is serving notice. What is he saying here? Notice here what he's saying. He's God saying there, those that refuse to tell them that God will punish all unrepentant sinners. I wouldn't want to be. I wouldn't want to be in their shoes, just as it was as far as those prophets. Do you know what those 800 prophets of Baal said to, to Ahab? Oh, you just go on down there. It ain't nothing going to happen to you. And Jehoshaphat said, well, is there not a God? Is there not a true prophet? I think he saw something other right then. Now, all these agreeing together. <laughs> oh, my, my. I know, 
Oh, my, my. He come, that prophet told him, said, no, he said, you ain't coming back. You know, no, no they're going you, to you die in that chariot. And so not only far as with Israel that we saw here, but here with the church in 2 Thessalonians 1 and 8. And those who obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's not just enough to know about Christ. I'm thankful there that mama taught me about Christ. But I'm going to tell you something other. Mama couldn't tell me everything. I've got some responsibility myself. My friend, Brother, brother, brother Mac, my friend, Brother, brother George, uh, brother, brother Collins told me or when I was listening to him preaching, he said, if I miss heaven, I can't blame nobody but myself. We can't blame nobody else. But when you look at this here, he says, serve and notice. One writer said, now listen carefully. If we have no confidence that God will deal justly with those who deserve his wrath, how can we be sure he will not deal justly with us? Let that sink into us there. There. You know, those who trust and obey him, those who are serving him. If God's not going to judge far as those there, because he said there, the soul that sinneth it will die. So the only way to escape the coming wrath of God, his anger, is to turn your life over to Jesus Christ, to follow him in a life of obedience. So he's serving an eviction notice here. God is serving that. Look at verse 1 with me. And I saw an, another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up. That means to complete there, made, make, to make an end or to finish the wrath of God. So the tribulation is nearing here an end. We're going to see in chapter 16, 17, 18 there what will occur with these last plagues, seven last plagues that are about to be poured out and they are filled. That means completely making an end with the wrath of God. Can you picture this in your mind with me? Man has been warned. Uh, there, I know that I'm a, uh, I feel like, I miss it so, I feel so inadequate. So small, but I'm trying my best to wake folks up to it. But they don't have no hunger, no desire for the truth anymore. We'd rather listen to fake news and all that kind of stuff that's going on. We'd rather listen to what somebody down the street's doing there and think, well, we're doing better than they're doing. We're comparing ourselves among ourselves. But what about when I compare myself to the lovely Lord Jesus Christ and who is the way, the truth, and the life? And the only way I'm going to make it is allow him to become Lord of mine, not just Savior. A lot of folks want him as Savior, but they don't want him as Lord. Don't want him as Lord. So man is being warned, been from the time of Enoch, the seventh from Adam there. Who did not see death? You know that he was he was he was caught up the seventh there, representing that seventh day, the the, the last. And they've been warned then from that time all the way to here to flee from the wrath to come. They have failed to believe. They failed to believe there, their wretched state there. And no, it don't matter what the preacher preaches today. It seems as though, now somebody help me here tonight. It seems as though we've watched enough gory stuff on television. There's so much gory stuff. We've seen blood, all that kind of stuff until our conscience has become seared. It's desensitized. It don't even bother us anymore. And the preacher's got to preach that. Well, preacher, that you really got all over me today. Well, if you're not where you need to be with God, I thank God for that. It's not me. He knows what you need. He knows. I don't, but the Holy Ghost does. But the preachers that are standing, I wouldn't want to be in their shoes. They're standing in their pulpit and telling folks everything's going to be all right. You just keep on believing that, that everything's going to be all right. No, things ain't going back to normal. In fact, my friend Brother Edwards was telling me his doctor said this to him, COVID won't never go in away. He said he didn't believe it was going away. Hey, take that vaccine. You know why? That it could be? Let me tell you 
I believe that COVID would have done and been gone if the church had got on its knees together and fasted and prayed and said, God, would you have mercy upon this nation that has killed 60 million babies and went into a voting booth and a voted people in and turned this thing around to where we wouldn't be killing these babies and all of these laws. But no, we didn't do that. We're still looking to man. Man's going to take care of everything. Government. Government, 40 million people. Could it be when that starts happening that that's when the revival really happens? Because as long as everybody's got everything and we're doing good, we don't need God. I was listening to a missionary that was over in Germany, and that missionary, this is what she said. She went she, uh, there, she's telling people, you know, trying to get people saved, and she's going down the street witnessing to people. And one, of, and especially the uh, uh, most of them that she talked to, she this is the words that they would tell her: "said the old folks need God, not us." Do you realize whether you had just been born, or whether you're ninety years old, that it is God that gives you the breath that you're breathing right now, and that God can say, "Okay, just like that." I mean, people have been. I mean, heart attacks. I mean, they didn't know what, it, what happened. I mean, the breath stopped right then. I mean, they're gone. I remember Sister Alex Anderson there. When we went to the funeral, she was telling about Brother Anderson was about 90-some years old. She just stopped there at McDonald's and got a hamburger, and he's over there eating the hamburger. She's riding down the road, and she turns over there and looks to him, and there he is just like that, and he's dead. She didn't even know he died. You don't never know when that time is. I want to be ready at that moment there, whenever it is. And here, there's only one person who can literally save you from the wrath that is coming. But they turn, have turned a deaf ear. They did not repent of their sin. They did not receive God's beloved Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And now, all those, all those who worship the beast and the Antichrist are going to experience their dire reward of the wrath of God and eternal death and separation from God. I, I was reading and studying that today. Can you imagine there? They thought, oh my, this is living there. If I can just have what, to, what the Rockefellers have got, if I can just have what Bill Gates has got, I can tell you Bill Gates ain't as happy as I am. No, no, no. Money's not what makes you happy. The only one that can bring you abundant life is the Lord Jesus Christ. I'd rather have a tent side of the road and have Jesus who owns the cattle on a thousand hills and everything that is therein. That's going back to heaven and prepared a place for me, a mansion over on the other side. Streets of gold, gates of pearl, walls of jasper. Oh, that's what's going to be heaven when I get there and I see Jesus Christ and I bow down at his feet and I lay a crown at his feet and I say worthy is the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world so I'll get verses I'll get verse 2 through 4 and we'll quit and I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire now this is beautiful here what the Lord is telling us here and they that had gotten the victory over the beast. These are the tribulation saints. These are those who did not abandon their faith in Christ, who were persecuted and threatened and were literally killed. These are those who were killed. You know, in the book over there in Revelation chapter 7, John is asking the question, where did these come from? And he said, these come up out of the great tribulation. This is where they are right here. And they're going to be singing a song. And it says here, they got the victory over the beast and over his image. There that they set up in that temple there. The Jews had to flee to, uh, to Petra there where they're going to be taken care of. And over his mark and over over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. This is the multitude John saw, as I mentioned, and they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true. He is just and true in his destruction. He had preachers. He raised up pastors. 
and some didn't want, no, they didn't want to hear the truth. Back when John Wesley was preaching there, he went to, I don't know how many churches that he went to, he preached on Sunday morning and Sunday night, and they told him, said, don't come back. You ain't welcome in this place. He's preaching on sanctification. I believe if we preached on sanctification more, it'd be less folks in church than they are. They don't want to hear about holiness. They don't want to have to hear about living right. But he went to about 10 churches, and then they said, we don't want, he said, okay, I'll just go and I'll set me up a place out in a cow pasture. And he set up a place in a cow pasture, and 10,000 people showed up. I still believe there's a group, a remnant of people who want to hear the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I don't want nothing that this old world's got to offer. I'm telling you, God's got something better over on the other side, and I can't hardly wait. I'm even praying, even so. Come, Lord Jesus, you can have this world if you choose. That's your choice. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I got my mind made up, hallelujah, by the help and grace of God. Just and true. He's able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. That destruction, in the, in the destruction of the wicked. And all of that just, uh, there it comes down. None, none are going to be able to say into that day that he was not true. He was not just and true. He gave me every opportunity. He gave me every opportunity. I came I went to church. I went there. That preacher preached. If I could get a hold of him, I could find him, I'd, I'd get rid of him. There's been men that's done, tried to do that before. There's one man there, he was at, at a store, and he told him, he said, I'm going to go whip me a preacher today. I'm going to give him a whooping he needs. And so he set out for that preacher and he got down and found out there and was down a path somewhere or another and went on down there and as he got to approaching closer, he got to hearing that preacher pray and that preacher was calling his name in prayer. Oh, God, somehow save him. Oh, turn him around, Lord. He came back and he went into that bill to come back to that store and they asked him this question. Said, you whipped that preacher. He said, no, no, I couldn't. How come you couldn't? Said, how can you whip a man that's praying for you? Woo! Hallelujah! Oh, my, my, there's power in prayer. If you'll just pray. And so we see here, he's just and true are thy ways. Thou king of saints, he's the king of saints, who shall not fear thee, even those who did not fear him. I'm telling you, there's coming, that's a time, Proverbs 16 and 6. You know the reason why men keep on watching pornography? Anybody know? They don't fear God. If you've got a besetting sin, you need to pray until God delivers you from it. Because if you don't, it's going to keep you out of the rapture. Whatever that sin would be, you need to begin, you need to deal with it and deal with it quickly. And so he's saying here, what is he saying there to him? Who shall not fear thee? Even those that don't fear. Proverbs 16 and 6, can you prove it, preacher? Yes. The Bible said, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. I'm on about verse 4, I think it is, Sister Teresa. Who shall not fear thee, even those who don't fear him now? O Lord, and glorify thy name. Oh, <laughs> Oh, hallelujah, there's going to be no more idols in that day. He's going to get rid of all the idols, all those that's been idol worshipers. For thou only, listen carefully, art holy. They cannot even look, he cannot even look upon evil. For all nations shall come and worship you, for thy judgments are manifest. All the hate, all the leftists who are saying about God's children, Hillary Clinton that's saying we're deplorables and we cling to our guns and we cling to our Bible. I'm going to cling to my Bible. She may take it and she may burn it, but i got good news for her. I've got it hid away in my heart and the Holy Ghost can bring it back unto my remembrance. Oh, they may take my Bible, but they cannot take Jesus out of my heart. He is in Oh, hallelujah. Woo! Now, I don't know about you. Now, that's, that's exciting to me. 
So who, those who do not fear God, have been deceived and being deceived by the worldly bunch. They think that judgment will never come, thought it would never come, but they're about to meet their maker. So here's a beautiful picture now that God has given us of all of those that accepted the Lord in the tribulation and will be martyred. They are the blessed ones back over in chapter 14. You know, the Lord said there, blessed are those that die in the Lord. These are these ones that are blessed. I want you to get that picture there. Some of these may be your loved ones. I, I may not get no further tonight, but I want to just get right in on this. If you have ever prayed for your loved ones and sent prayers up in to God, He's bottling them up. And in the tribulation period, even if you do not see them saved now, oh, it does not mean that they will not be saved. Keep on praying. Pray. Pray until you pray through. Until you touch the hem of his garment. Press on through. The church is sitting back in her easy chair at easy in Zion. And Brother Mac is time. We got up out of our lazy chair and prayed until the God of heaven rained his precious spirit down upon us one more time. We've got tired of praying. We can't even pray an hour anymore. We've turned our hour of prayer into sweet, into just a little talk with Jesus, Brother Speed says. Oh, God, help us here. But they may be your loved ones. Don't give up on them. Don't you give up on them. You keep on praying. They're standing. These are standing here. These that got the victory over the beast, over his image, over his number. They're standing on the glassy sea. They've got harps. And they're singing to Almighty God that his ways are just and true. It was better. Listen, let me say something to you. It's going to be better for those to suffer at the hands of the Antichrist and die a martyr's death than it is than it is for them almighty oh, God to go against God go against Christ and reject him as Lord that everlasting angel is going to be preaching that gospel message to those that are here and if you pray can you just believe listen at me carefully I believe when we pray do you know the reason why some of those ministers like Deal Moody, Charles Finley, and Jonathan Edwards and others, they had people praying for them while they were preaching. Oh, but I believe if we'll pray, the Holy Ghost is just revealed. I believe this. I believe there if you and I will pray and we'll send up prayers in heaven when that everlasting angel is preaching the everlasting gospel or the two witnesses or the 144,000 will be preaching that message there that it will contact with them and they'll remember what you told them and that prayer will ignite it and say, I'd rather die than I would to serve the Antichrist and take his mark or serve his image. But I am going to serve the Lord. You can cut my head off, but I, as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. Wake up, church. Jesus Christ is coming again. It's time to get our houses in order and be ready because Jesus is coming and he's serving an eviction notice upon this world. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Can you imagine here what a sight that it must have been to behold all those that had gotten the victory over the beast? All the devils they had to face in the persecution. Their cry from under the altar in Revelation chapter 6, verses 10 through 12 has now at last, now at last been answered. They thought it was so long. How long, O oh Lord? There will you, in other words, bring judgment upon those that done this evil to us. And here all of us, all at last, their prayers have been answered and they are at last in the presence of the Lord Jesus. Can you imagine the sound that may, must be coming from that choir that's filled there with hearts of gratitude. I'm convinced when we sing, we need to sing with a heart of gratitude. Look what the Lord hath done. Look what the Lord hath done. Hallelujah. He healed my body. He 
touch my body, touch my mind. I get it right there, but oh my, my, look what the Lord has done. You want to show me, you want to show me. I don't have time to finish this, but you want to show me. Yes, I was 14 years old, but I was a mean little fella. <laughs> Come on. No, I can't believe that. What the, I mean, that fella there, he coming to me. But thank God, thank God, he put God down in there and he changed that old man, that old heart, and he gave me a new pliable heart, one that says, yes, Lord, whatever thou sayest, Lord, I'll do. Lord, I want to serve you. I want to live for you. He served an eviction notice all the way back to Enoch to flee from the wrath to come. And now, as you see in all this stuff, they think, they think, the world elites think, we're going to win out, and if everybody else is die, we got a buck down there we got food for 25 years and when we come out brother Shane they think when they come out that they're going to replenish the earth but I got news for you there's a bride that's going up and when God pours out his wrath then we're coming back and we're going to take over this world oh all the beer joints in hell did you know did you know that Kamala Harris had just said there when she get in that she's going to legalize prostitution Uh-huh, uh-huh. But I got news for her. It ain't going to last long because God Almighty, through his son Jesus Christ, is serving an eviction notice. And when he comes back, uh, Kamala Harris is not going to be in the picture. None of her, none of her whore houses or whatever she got, uh, all of that stuff is going to be brought under the feet of Jesus Christ. And he's going to reign as King of kings and Lord of lords. I gotta quit. My, my, my. They're trying to bring us under their control. I tell you, I encourage you to go to a website. I can tell you where to go, read the whole article. Sister Dally, it ain't gonna be long. We're gonna see BBC and Brother Pollard. Woo! Those that's gone before us. I got to thinking about it the other day. I was. I just went there to console my sister. Went to the house. My sister's 83, I believe it is. Ken was 87. And I had prayer with her. I was just encouraging her and telling her, I said, he just preceded us a little bit. If COVID gets this preacher, you know that I'm just going on. Well, I ain't going to walk around in fear. There's too many people that's dying and going to hell and don't even know what's about to happen to them. The church is asleep. You, preacher, can you prove that? You read, you read about the ten virgins, all of them, even the wise, slumbered and slept. And I'll tell you why. The things of this world we've gotten too comfortable We've gotten too comfortable here. And we got loved ones that don't know. But oh, I believe if we'll pray. I wonder if we'd stand. I don't know if I'm going to come to the altar. If we could just pray, have an altar where we're at. And pray and ask God. Lord, wake up our loved ones. Wake up the church. The church needs to be wo- awakened. The awakened. The church is in. The, my, 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 my. It's. It's close. He's coming. This ain't no time for us. To <clears throat> this ain't no time for us to play around. It's time for us to get ready. God is about to serve an eviction notice. Oh, my, my, my. I didn't finish it tonight, but we will. Oh, God, touch your people. Touch our church. Lord, awake us out of our slumber and our sleep. Oh, God, just one more time, Lord. Your servant is so burdened, Lord. Lord, I'm seeking your face, and you're giving me the word and the message, God. No, let it be. You see it. Mighty God, mighty God, be glorified, be honored, be praised. Be lifted up, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray for every lukewarm Christian, I pray. 
Oh, God, everyone, Lord, that's professing to be a Christian, dear God. Oh, mighty God, Lord Jesus, Lord God, they have deceived themselves and they're thinking they can sin and still be a Christian or claim to be a Christian, oh, God. Wake them up, Lord, wake them up, Lord, wake them up before it's too late. Lord Jesus, may they pray through. I pray they'll pray through those that have been watching us on Facebook Live. They'll pray through. Oh, God, they'll get a hold of the horns of the altar. They'll pray through. They'll pray through. Oh, God. Mighty God. Touch our young people, oh, God. Stir us, oh, Lord, God. Ain't no time for us to have church as usual, God. It's time for us to be awake. Oh, mighty God, Lord Jesus. My heart breaks, oh, God. Lord Jesus, if that doctor's correct, dear God, there's some will never be back to church, Lord God, because of this coronavirus. That breaks my heart, Lord Jesus, because, Lord, the body, everyone in the body is useful. Everybody one in the body is needful. Lord, we need the gifts of the Spirit in operation in the body. We need the gift of tongues in interpretation, the gift of wisdom, the gift of knowledge, the gift of prophecy. We need the gift of faith. We need the gift, Lord Jesus, of healings. We need the gift of miracles, Lord. I pray to you, God, Lord Jesus, for Sister Millie that was operated on today. Pray for her, her husband, those that are lost, our loved ones, Lord, that husband husband, that son, that daughter. Oh, God, awake them, oh, Lord Jesus. Stir us, Lord. Stir us from our activity, our lethargy, our complacency, oh, God. Realize, oh, God, don't let me be, Lord, careless here at the end. Don't let me be a castaway, dear God. Don't let me preach to others, oh, God, and become a castaway myself, oh, God. Oh, Lord Jesus, oh, mighty God. Thank you, Lord, for keeping me, God. It's only by your grace, Lord, I acknowledge you, God. I walk humbly before you, Lord. I walk humbly before you, Lord, God. Oh, Lord, God, almighty oh, God. Oh, more of you, Lord, more of you, Lord, more of you. Touch our people, God, touch our people, God. Touch our young people, God. Lord Jesus, send more young people, Lord, this way. Send more young people, Lord, God, I pray. More people, Lord, send more people, God. Send more, Lord God. Oh, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Lord, stir us, oh God. Stir our church, oh God, our people, God. Oh, pray, church, pray, church, pray. Pray, church, like we've never prayed before. Intercede for our loved ones. Hallelujah. 